Hello, welcome to the Friday, October 22nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. In today's diary, Brad is updating us on the stolen image evidence campaign. One interesting update here, the message that you'll receive is typically not sort of just a simple spam email, but instead was likely submitted via some kind of web-based contact form. The message then claims that there is some evidence of wrongdoing, some copyright violation or the like, uh, which will link to a zip file. The zip file, once uncompressed, uh, will reveal a JavaScript file and then the JavaScript file does download and run a DLL. That turns out to be malware based on Sliver. Sliver is uh, often referred to as an adversary emulation tool, essentially a tool pen testers are using in order to create malicious files for their tests. But of course, the same tools are also quite useful for the bad guys. And as usual, Brad will provide you with all the PCAPs and details in order uh, to train your teams in recognizing and analyzing any similar activity. And Bitdefender ran across yet another rootkit that takes advantage of uh, digital certificates that are validated by uh, Microsoft. NetFilter was a similar case a couple of months ago. And the problem here is that a lot of the protection that uh, Windows uses against rootkits, against uh, drivers and such uh, being installed are being bypassed as soon as the malware is able to present a valid certificate. Certificate. These are not stolen certificates, but instead the malware author was apparently successful into tricking Microsoft into signing one of their certificates. Aside from the fact that this, of course, uh, can be very damaging to a system exposed to this malware, the thing that concerns me is that apparently uh, this certificate has been used for about a year now before it was now made public uh, by a Bitdefender. And what really concerns me here is that, first of all, uh, this uh, certificate was apparently used for about a year before it was uh, discovered, and it was used for fairly low-level attacks. For example, against online uh, gaming uh, users, it was used to redirect their traffic, uh, intercept authentication, and uh, possibly stealing uh, digital goods from their accounts. So it was far from a nation state attack and nothing that you would usually consider an APT or anything like this. So the fact that it's apparently not really all that difficult to obtain one of these fake certificates makes you wonder how many more are out there that have not been discovered yet. And it's that time of the quarter again. We got a yet another quarterly Oracle critical patch update. Of course, the number of vulnerabilities being addressed in these updates is always pretty large. I think this one is actually smaller than what we have seen in the past. But remember, this is across all of Oracle's products. So there are many, many different products that are affected here. Also, many of the vulnerabilities are really sort of the same library like OpenSSL or such that's being updated in various uh, products. As usual, I recommend that you take a look at uh, what Oracle products you are running. And uh, of course, now MySQL, Java, and uh, yeah, Solaris, if you're running this, are sort of part of Oracle's portfolio now. And double check if there's anything that you need to patch. And then we got a remote code execution vulnerability in the popular decompression utility WinRAR. Now, while it sounds bad, uh, exploitability of the vulnerability is somewhat limited. The problem here is that if you're using the trial version of WinRAR, after the trial version expires, then ever so often you're being displayed with a message asking you to buy a proper license. Well, uh, this involves downloading some HTML from WinRAR's website. And this download is subject to, first of all, a machine in the middle attack. And second,
certainly it uses the Internet Explorer rendering engine MS HTML in order uh, to render the message. So this could potentially then be abused by an attacker that's able to set up a machine in the middle attack in order to inject malicious code and trigger code execution but given all the dependencies of the exploitability of the vulnerability i don't really see it as a big issue just well update winrar and maybe buy a proper license and Sonotype is informing about yet more malicious npm libraries in this case it's uh, three libraries clown and clow spelt with a K in the beginning and OXA. Apparently some of these libraries are claiming to be used to parse the user agent field in HTTP requests, but what they really want to do is mine crypto coins. Respective accounts have already been disabled on NPM. So just as an awareness item, yes, these malicious uh, NPM libraries, they keep popping up and looks like there is no easy way to avoid them other than stick with trusted, well-validated libraries. And of course, make sure that you are spelling them correctly. And that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.